I go to mayor and council members. Let me let me just kick off. I want to thank everybody. Um, you know, for the for the public at large, thank you for tuning in. Um, a lot of council members we've been trying to we've been discussing having a meeting, but given the circumstances, um, we we weren't sure when to do it. This just felt like the right time for everybody to uh, get to and and sort of have a discussion as to what's been done so far and and what we're thinking about for the future um the project is COVID-19 um look this is all of our first global pandemics except maybe Ed London I think he was in high school <coughs> going on but the rest of us it's all uh it's all so, so um I want to thank staff for everything you guys are doing I you know I've, I've been listening in on meetings and watching and I know how much work is going into this so thank you um, thank you to everybody. Thank you for being patient. Thanks to <coughs> people in the village. When I talk to them, they feel good about what we're doing and, you know, they have concerns obviously, but they know that we're listening and we're doing what we can. So thank you to everybody. Thank you to council. Thank you to staff. Um, just keep it up. Tonight is really about what we've seen, what we've thought about and, and considerations moving forward. Um, I wanted to have, you know, be a broad conversation. I think we all do. So with that, I'll hand it back over to Conchita. And also, um, for Councilman Laredo, I need you to speak up. If everybody else could mute, and if you want to speak, raise your hand so I can see you, and I will call you in the same old-fashioned way. All right? Okay, okay so the, the first item on the agenda, Mr. Mayor, is Mayor and Council Members, COVID-19 Emergency Matters. Okay. Um, start us off. Uh, what what issue do you want to start off first? Um, do you are you people hitting bells or are they just muting? Um, Ed, you want to talk about testing? Why don't we? Okay. About three weeks ago, two of my friends, Eddie Easton and Carlos De La Cruz, gave me a call to tell me that a third friend has a company that was doing testing. I called him. He said they were busy. They do in the city of Miami and many other different municipalities and cities. But in a few weeks or so, he basically would be able to handle Key Biscayne. But he told me we need the infrastructure, what are we gonna do, et cetera, et cetera. So we need a place and basically the layout. Uh, we talked about the Crossbridge Church parking lot with Andrea. Uh, and, <clears throat> excuse me, Andrea made a sketch after, I think she had Kimley Horn made a sketch for one row in and one row out. I was sort of unhappy with that because I thought it would take forever with just one testing station. I submitted a drawing to use Village Way, close the streets off before the community center since that's closed, Village Hall, et cetera, and give six test stations. About a week later, Andrea got back to me and said, the team doesn't like my location. When I say the team, I, I'm talking about all her directors and whoever else she was involved with. So I said to Andrea, get me more test stations uh, at Crossbridge Church. She came back with four more test stations for the church. I asked her it was approved. She said it was approved by Tim. And, but she also made it very clear she didn't want any village people involved, that we should get whoever's gonna help us do this, supply all the personnel. Uh, I then call, <clears throat> excuse me. I then called back my friend who has a testing company and he told me, unfortunately, he only does the tests and the reports. He suggested I contact the city of Miami because they were basically, who they were using to do the swabbing. Uh, Carlos De La Cruz, uh, who was friends with a guy named Ricardo Weiss as a medical staffing company, put me in contact with them. And they said, they said they could supply the people to swab, but they needed the PPE, the personal protective equipment. Contacted Eric for the personal property for the protective equipment, which he said was in short supply, but he will try and look for it. Meanwhile, he told me he favors a lockdown rather than a test. And he gave me the reasons why I thought a lockdown would be beneficial. Uh, Chuck called me and he had a concern for seniors. He was very concerned about our senior members, I guess people 90 and over, uh, that, uh, what are you smiling for, Michael? Uh, so anyway, <laughs> that possibly uh, could, could get sick or something on the way to the test, et cetera. And he had some good points and I suggested to him, possibly we could have a swabber in the hallway so those people didn't want to drive or come over could be done in the hallways. Uh, I then called Ricardo, and that's the, the guy from the test, from the staffing company and told him probably need four people for the uh, swabbers for the test stations and one swabber for the, um, 
uh, the, the hallways. And basically, he went how long, and I really didn't know. I said, well, let's let's figure three weeks, and we can always change it. He needed something, and he said he was sending a proposal. Anyway, then I talked to Chuck, and he wanted me to put everything in writing, what I've been done so far, which I did. I outlined what I did in the letter, and then I sent a second letter to correct the mistakes I made in the first letter to clarify the things that weren't clear in my first letter. I never said I was a good letter writer. Uh, the lab called me uh, and said, you know, is Captain Feeney authorized for Key Biscayne? And I said, yes. I said, no problem. And the lab calls the next day and says, Feeney is only author only involved with testing the first responders, which, you know, sort of shocked me because I oh. thought he was, you know, he's called and he was told to know everybody. So I talked to Eric and then <clears throat> I asked him about Feeney and he agreed that Feeney would be the contact with the lab. And he told me about then about the mobile testing program. I asked him why he kept me in the dark, you know, with the mobile tech, because I knew nothing about this since I've been working on this thing for like three weeks. He didn't answer me, he didn't tell me. Anyway, uh, I did uh, leave a message back with um, <clears throat> Natalie at the lab that Feeney now was going to be the contact person with the Key Biscayne. She had only one person contacting him, <laughs> not, not many. And that's how I left it. Meanwhile, Melissa had, McCann had sent me an article about uh, Abbott Labs and their testing thing for this real quick test. I think it was five minutes or 15 minutes. And I asked her if she could possibly, con <clears throat> excuse me, if she could contact uh, Abbott, get the information and see what we've done and see if we could get the quick testing done here and also uh, to help getting the PPE gear. Uh, Melissa can, will speak when you recognize her and bring you up to speed with that. She, rather than me telling you, she can give you firsthand where we are with that. And at this time, I really would like to thank Carlos De La Cruz and Eddie Easton because they really did a lot to help me get all these different people and yet, well, actually to tell me initially got me moving uh, because I believe testing is essential uh, because if we don't know who is sick, they'll spread it to other people. So I really think it's very, very important to do that. And uh, Melissa for getting everything else at this time. Anyway, the manager has taken over. Uh, she's now dealing with the staffing people and Athene is dealing with the lab. And that's basically it up to date. I can speak for another half hour, but I think that's plenty. Um, okay, uh, anybody on council have any comments or questions for Ed right now? Okay, um, I wanted to, you know, manager, if I could unmute you and why don't you give us sort of an update of, of where we are in, in, in talking about the testing and, and, and go from there. Okay, good evening everyone, good to, to see you all doing well here. So the testing issue came up, we have been able to initiate a mobile testing tool through the fire department. Uh, we did do our first handful of tests today, those results have been brought to the lab. We are operating under the medical director of the city of Miami, and uh, that's how we've been proceeding. Um, we have began to put together um, what it would look like if we were to roll out a more robust testing program and we can answer any specific questions, seek any guidance that the council might want to give us and um, whatever the will of the council is, we're able to deliver. And I thank all of the community partners as well and the residents for supporting this initiative. Mike, you're muted. Uh, I know, I realize that. I'm going to catch on. Look, we're, we're, we're in the starting point to this. Um, anybody else have any uh, questions? Councilmember? Oh, sorry, there's a hand. I, I have a question. Uh, hold on, Luis, Luis, hold on. Uh, Ignacio is going to go first. Then okay. All right. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, it's a little hard. You can't unmute yourself sometimes. Right. Um, <clears throat> just a few comments. I've been thinking this through. And I understand the sentiment as to why people want to get tested. And I understand that there is information that could be useful. Um, but there are a whole lot of practical problems that I see that really need to be thought through. Um, first and foremost, I really, if this is done in Key Biscayne, I think it should be contracted out to some sort of medical uh, administrator or provider. Because you, first you have all kinds of HIPAA situations where you don't want village personnel to be handling any sort of medical information on behalf of, of the residents. Uh, number two, you need the qualified people to administer the tests. My understanding is that there's only one firefighter that's also a nurse that is qualified to draw blood or, or, or do swabs or any of the sort. 
So we need many more people of that, uh, of that kind. But also the other problem is, okay, people get tested today. We have potentially 13,000 residents that will want to be tested. That test is good for today, but what happens next week? Is everyone going to want to get tested again? With what frequency are residents going to be tested? That's just a practical problem. Um, number two, uh, three, I guess. So is the village going to pay for it, or are people going to pay it out of pocket, or are people's health insurance going to get billed? Um, if the health insurance is going to get billed, that adds a whole another layer of complexity, and that's why I think you need to have some sort of healthcare administrator doing it because they're going to be set up for that. Um, I, I I do think first and foremost the the order of the day is for self isolation. I do see you know value in in getting tested, but there's a whole lot of problems that that pop up once you get past the first. Uh, the, the first desire to just be tested and know if you're positive or negative. That's just what I think. You're muted, Mike. Council Member Laredo. Yes, I, I just want to understand that this is a moving uh, crisis and a lot of words. I guess if uh, the issue of testing, uh, am I missing something? Is there a test kit available? Ed, you want to speak to that? I'll let you. Eric, Eric can speak to that. He's yeah, okay. The Eric, you want to speak to that? Because if I hear the governor of New York and everybody else who higher authority than us urging to get test kits. You want me to go ahead and address that question? Good evening, council, Mr. Mayor. Uh, hopefully everybody is safe to simply answer the question. Uh, test kits have been a moving target. Uh, the city of Miami, under the medical direction of Dr. Paul Adams and Armando Cliff, uh, who are also the uh, JMH uh, emergency room uh, directors, uh, they have uh, access to test kits, which is this, a bioreference, which is the name of the laboratory, which is the same um, contact that Ed London has. Uh, they've been successful in getting test kits for all of their sites, for their mobile testing units and their drive through uh, and those, that's the location where those 10 test kits came from. And we're finalizing an agreement, assuming it's the will of the council that they want to test. And uh, we'll continue the mobile testing program. So, so to my knowledge, test kits are currently available to us as long as we have an agreement. I got, I, I, uh, Katie, I think you, and then Brett, you're next. Um, I do have, um, I, I've got uh, Melissa White here, so maybe she can shed a little bit more light. Melissa, are you on? I'm on. Good. Okay. Can you talk, talk a little bit about the the testing? Uh, you know what you what you've been looking into, and and just sort of give the information that you can maybe give some shines a little light. Um, today we've currently uh, surveyed um, as of this very minute 1,002 residents. Um, the survey. The survey asked. Um, questions like, are you 65 and older? Um, are you experiencing symptoms? Would you like to be contacted if a test was available? And based on that, we have ascertained so far that um, of the 65 and older, 27 are symptomatic. Of those 27, Fire Rescue has already been successful in reaching out to uh, 15 of those that were interested in testing. And uh, of the remaining 12, I have no doubt that they'll be able to contact or follow up with them tomorrow and the next day. Uh, the total population that have, has responded and is showing um, symptoms is 116. But currently, we are only testing those that are in the vulnerable population of 65 and older. Um, there is uh, one of the things I think that, that you guys are going to discuss later is whether or not to add um, pre-existing conditions or vulnerabilities that may be taken into account in addition to age. 
Uh, thank you for that. Uh, hold on, uh, Council Member Petros. Hi, everybody. I just wanted to, first of all, commend Melissa and the fire department and Chief Ling for getting this started to get some testing. And one of the things that hasn't been mentioned, it's my understanding they're following the guidelines of the CDC of who they're making these tests available to. There's a, like Council Member Segarola said, there's a lot of issues at hand on how, if we did widespread testing, how that would be handled as a community. And as, as exciting as that sounds on one level, I think there's two reasons that we do testing. And the testing is one, to take care of our sickest and most vulnerable residents. And the other way would be because we were trying to use it as a diagnostic tool. Unfortunately, the diagnostic tool would have had to be implemented right at the beginning of this in order to effectively trace back when someone actually has a positive test. So I think for our community right now to do this continued testing and try to help those people that are most vulnerable and if it's on a small scale and they can go with a mobile unit to those places, I think that's a really important thing to offer our community. And if we can, if we have the bandwidth to offer it to those that are younger than 65 but have immunosuppressed issues, that is just good for them. And I think we should remember that if somebody's very sick, they're also calling 911 and going to the hospital. So this is for people that are in a condition that is compromised, but they're still able to stay home. And I think where we landed as a community with the help of the survey, the community foundation and the fire department is a great place to start right now. And we can reevaluate next week when we have another meeting. That's it. Sorry, thank you, Katie. Uh, hold on one second. Uh, Council, uh, Vice Mayor. Vice Mayor, uh, why can't I unmute you? I'm trying, I'm trying. Okay. okay, can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right, so I agree with a lot what uh, Council Member Petros just said. Um, it should have a very specific criteria if we are going to test. Uh, we should not be testing everybody. I'm actually more worried about the the, the the false security that you give if somebody tests without the without a um, test negative and then go around and, and up, end up contracting it a couple of days later and spreading it. Uh, so I think that for sure I'm, I'm on uh, board with. So the other thing that I think that we need to be looking at um, is, and, and I dropped off for a little bit, so I didn't really hear what uh, Ed said, his full uh, speech there, but uh, really what the cost is associated to a, uh, a drive-through testing center because um, we really need to know what we're doing here. I know that Marlins Park is open for everybody to go down there. And uh, if we're going to provide uh, a much easier access for our, our village uh, to get tested, that's great. But we have to see what the cost is and what, what we're relieving because I don't know right now what it is how long it takes for someone to get a test in marlins park um you know how long does it take to get an appointment how long does it take when you get, get your next step. Back? and um and at the same time what it will cost us to have testing here if, it, if we're talking about a hundred thousand dollars a week that may be a, a an unfeasible thing if we're talking about five thousand dollars a week it may be a very easy thing to do uh so uh the other thing you know i don't i personally have been doing the math you know, if we're doing 50 tests a day, we are doing 10 times the the rate per capita that Florida is doing currently. And we should be able, I think, to handle 50 with one lane. I don't think we need six lanes. I don't think we need four lanes. Um, maybe we could do two lanes if we wanted to look in that direction. Uh, but, you know, for a cost standpoint, I don't want to say we need six lanes and the thing costs a lot. Maybe we should start small, test it out, see how it's going. Uh, if we want to go in this direction. I, I want to also commend that the mobile testing has already started. And I, 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 my understanding is that we may have done already 10 of the tests. And uh, so that is actually going pretty well. So I think that we have something moving. We should maybe focus on getting that uh, going. Uh, I, I would like to ask at some point our chief uh, of fire, you know, how many tests can he do a day on the mobile side? Because if that is working, we should probably continue in that direction. However, I would ask our, our council 
to give direction to our manager to maybe look in plan B of an actual drive-through testing center uh, as soon as possible and put it all together with the cost, what we need to do, because if worst case scenario that this uh, mushrooms out and all the other testing centers are overwhelmed, we at least have a plan B that we can get going and do a drive-through. So that, that was kind of my thoughts in, in what I've been listening to uh, this current. Ed, you want to speak to the, no, the, the one thing that we're talking about is far people who are sick, people who have immune problems, et cetera. My major concern, I think everybody should be the people who are asymptomatic who have no symptoms, they're here and they have the thing and they're spreading it to other people because they have no idea that they have it. And I think that's the most dangerous thing we have on Key Biscayne. And if the more we test, the more we find out people and trace who they can talk to or they in contact with. I think the better off we'll be. May I? Yeah, jump, jump back in. Sorry, you're not, you're not on video, so I can't see when you wave. I know. I apologize. I oh, apologize no to all of you. I just, uh, I, I wonder if I can get back to my question and a quick yes or no, so I can understand. If we were to decide right now that we want to do full testing in KB Spain, now. Thursday at six o'clock or six thirty. Can we get the test kit tomorrow morning or soon thereafter? Yes or no? All right. I'm I'm going to put Air, uh, Chief Lang back on. Chief Lang. Chief Lang. There you go. Uh, the simple answer is no. I cannot get uh, enough kits to roll out a, a full drive-through testing center tomorrow morning. Uh, thank you. I just want to make sure we understand when we're talking about testing, we're sometimes including myself, confused by the people who are providing providers and they may or may not have the actual kit. That's all. But I echo some of the other concerns of uh, Petros and uh, to go slow as uh, we're going to meet again on Tuesday anyway. Uh, but I, Oops. I think the key here is not the providers, or the administrators of the test and the policy decision we have to make but whether or not we can get kids if not we're going to create expectations that will not be met council member mccormick did you have anything to say there you go i did can you hear me now i can hear you now so i share a lot of the same concerns that have already been uh voiced um specifically um, the concern that Brett brought up about the fact that the tests aren't all that accurate all the time. I think I heard today 30% false negatives. I don't think that means we shouldn't be testing, but I do think it's really important that we keep, I would like to, I would like to pursue this idea of setting up testing, but I really want to make sure that we keep our focus on people should be assuming that when they go out of their house, they're going to be in, encountering this. When you're in your elevator, you have to be super careful when you're pressing the button. That the most important thing I think Ignacio said is that people, the best thing that they can do is to be staying home, to be isolating, to be keeping your group that you're isolating with extremely small, not thinking, well, it's 10 people here, 10 people there, I'm okay, because that's actually exponentially a whole lot of people. So I think we have to keep our message really strong on people should be isolating. I would very much like to pursue this idea of testing, but not that it, to keep it clear that this is not really a panacea, right? It's important to know, and the more information we can get, it obviously is good, but I think it's important to keep our messaging that the best thing people can do is to stay home. Right, um, and, and I would just add, I, I get the concerns. Um, the, the thing that to, to the reason we want to do this is to make sure again, and, and, and I want to leave this to the safety officials. I think they've been, you know, they've been looking at it. Uh, council member London is the one who brought this idea to the table and he's been the one sort of pushing it along. But as far as how we're going to roll it out, I think we do need to, to council member Sigarola's point, we need professionals to be administering the test. And I believe, uh, you know, in speaking to chief Lang just today, getting ready for, for this meeting, 
he said, I mean, that's, that's the goal is to have somebody providing, have a medical provider providing the staff to administer the test because I don't think it should be our people. Um, the other point is to everybody talking about this, absolutely isolation. If somebody gets a negative, it's, it doesn't mean it's not a get out of jail free card. You're, you're, you're still, unfortunately, we're gonna be in this for a while. This is the long haul and people have to continue to self isolate and, and reduce their outside activities as much as possible. So just because you're, you're negative doesn't mean you're, you're able to, to go to the beach or go to the park or, or just kind of go back to your regular life. Um, but by identifying those who are positive, we'll be able to, to kind of adapt potentially the, the, uh, the South Korean model, which was incredibly effective in trying to nail down who are those people and who have they touched? Who have they talked to? Where have they been? And how can we start tracking those people down? I think this is critical for this village going forward. I understand your concerns, but I, I would like to see staff continue to push this forward um, and continue to move on it. Um, uh, Councilmember Petros and then Council. Okay, I would just like to add a couple of things. The medical advancements that are literally happening daily need to be paid attention to also. So the test that I believe is happening right now is actually one that does require a medical personnel because you have to swab deep up into somebody's nose and the chance of infection, it, it's dangerous for the person that's doing the test as well. Whereas the rapid testing with the Abbott Laboratories has a much easier way. And there's even a lot of work being done that somebody can provide a sample that would be sealed that's a, that could be handed to somebody. So it really may be in a week or two that the testing protocol gotcha. could be so dramatically different that it's worth taking some time doing what we're doing right now and, and really just keeping our eyes and ears open on the efficacy and the ease of rolling out a larger scale project with new advancements that are happening every day. Councilmember London, you're on. Uh, Melissa brought up a very good point. And besides the testing our people, we have the people who are working at the, uh, I guess the Winn-Dixie, the Golden Hog, the stores that are open, who are seeing Key Biscayne residents on a daily basis. Now, really they should be tested to make sure they are not uh, positive and bringing the uh, virus onto the island. So I think, Eric, you should consider testing them also. That's a question for me. And that's some, an approach that we want to take as far as a strategy, we can implement uh, uh, the appropriate strategy with uh, this mobile testing unit. And I think uh, council member Moss asked, somebody asked earlier, uh, what's our capacity? Uh, right now uh, we're between six to 10 and our goal is we get more proficient, uh, we can ramp up. So if you want us to test uh, the employees at Winn-Dixie, we can look into that. Thank you. Um, is there anybody else who want, I mean, again, I'm just gonna reiterate the point. I, our, our, our safety officials are looking at this uh, I think it is a moving target to everybody's point. We all understand that, but we need to start making the preparations, particularly with regard to how are we going to staff this? What are the protocols that we're going to follow? How are we going to get people in and out? Um, so I think those are things that we can certainly do in preparation for the test. Uh, count, uh, Vice Mayor, and then Council Member. Can you guys hear me? Okay, so after hearing what uh, Ed said, um, I didn't understand that that's what the idea was to try to find the asymptomatic uh, people, which would then we would basically what you're saying Ed, is that we're going to have to test everybody. Uh, I don't know how often you would have to test everybody. I mean, once a week, once every two weeks, we would have to keep retesting because you never know when it's going to happen. But I think you bring up a good point. And if we're going to go in that direction, then, you know, having two of our paramedics running around door to door is not feasible and that for doing that. I think that's more of a feasible thing for, you know, people with immune system uh, issues or, um, you know, 65 and older that have symptoms that need to get tested. Uh, but I, what I want to make sure is that I think that we should give a clear message. I don't know if we really have a clear message right now to our staff of what it is that I think we want to actually do. I mean, is it that we're going to start to, I mean, I'm guessing that this already started, but to start preparing to put together a drive-through center that has how many lanes and putting together what the costs are going to be 
and how 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 logistically would it work? We have the personal protect protective equipment that's an issue or shortage. That you know, how do we get a hold of this? How long does it get? Uh, can we get this? Um, who's going to operate it? Uh, is is that what our direction would be to to our manager is to put her staff together to put that together and and for you know when do we want to have a plan put together a week uh, three days you know what what's feasible maybe we should hear from our staff also about how how that would work. Uh, so I think I'm next. Am I, Mike? You are. You're on. Um, I was going to say pretty much what Brett said, and I would love to see if we could go to the manager. But I would like to just say one other direction that I it sounds like was a, a good idea to me, but I would like to see if we could find out if this is like um, something we have consensus on. If we're interested in directing the manager to try to have her staff to test the employees that are, would like to be, obviously we can't force them, but the Winn Dixie and CVS employees and other people that are coming here and interacting with our residents and really, I mean, we're relying on these people. They're doing an amazing job and really helping all of us to keep ourselves safe. But it does seem like a kind of a crucial piece of information that would be really beneficial. But I would love to know if we could find out in this meeting, is this something we want to do? Let's, let's direct her. And it's kind of hard to do because I don't know, I'm looking at this on my phone. I can't see everyone at once. So I have no idea where anyone yeah, what no is. Next, I got yeah. If you could maybe do that, Mike. What did you say? Councilmember McCormick, apologize. What's your last point, your question to me? He's muted. If you could um, see if we have consensus on that point that Ed brought up about adding to the list of the testing they're doing now, the Winn-Dixie and CVS employees. Okay. And and their employees that are interacting with our right. Resident. No, I think it, okay. Council member Cigarola. Um, my suggestion for the direction that we should discuss with the manager would be number one, continue hammering home the message that the first priority is self-isolation. And then number two, investigating, I don't know how quickly this can be done, but reaching out to some qualified medical provider vendor. Uh, I don't know if by next meeting, any information can be put together, but to create a testing station on Key Biscayne that will be handled by this vendor, not by village personnel, to prioritize people that are, since you do have a limited number of test kits available, at least in the beginning, prioritize people who are symptomatic. Um, I would say follow the CDC guidelines, but the CDC guidelines are actually very strict is my understanding. Number one, you have to be symptomatic. And number two, you, I think you have to show that you've come into contact with somebody who has tested positive, uh, which is very difficult to do. But I, I would look to first limiting to people who are symptomatic. And from there, as this situation, this is a moving target. As this situation evolves, more tests become available later on, and we reevaluate. Can, can I make a suggestion? I think the suggestion, you know what? I got to go back to Councilmember Laredo because I can't see him He's jumping up and down. Councilmember Laredo? Yeah, so I'm listening. And again, my apologies for not being on visual. I couldn't. No, do it no worries. I just I, I wanted to make sure we weren't ignoring. Um, the Look, my I mean, I think what we should do is have, I know staff is working on all this. I know for a fact that that Ed and 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 Chief Lang and the manager have been going back and forth on these things, and they they they're talking all these things you're talking about, like tests and the providers and everything. They they are being discussed. And what I what I would propose is why don't we have the experts, our our public safety people, come back to us with what they think what their recommendations are? Because you, you, we're all sort of shooting it. We're we're all real novices at this. Not that there are any real pandemic experts in in the group, but they know it much better than we do. So why not, you know, I think the direction should be, we need, what, what are the best ways to handle this? What are their recommendations given, given what they're hearing right now? And let them come back to us with a plan, you know, because I think otherwise we're, we're not going to get it. And this is going to, this is going to spiral and we're not going to get anywhere. Um, Council member London, I apologize. Basically, uh, Andrea made it very clear 
uh, that basically she didn't want village people involved doing the testing. And that's when I contacted uh, Ricardo from Interim Medical Staffing. And basically he has been talking to uh, Andrea directly to provide the people to do the swabbing. So she is on that and she's been working with it and she should have a proposal shortly. She has one already. All right, uh, thank you, uh, Council Member. Um, Council Member Brett Moss, or Vice Mayor, you're, you're waving, you're touching your face, are you? Okay, go. Okay, so I, I see three things that we've been talking about, and forgive me if I'm missing anything. I, I think that I'm in agreement with looking at our workers that are working at the Wind dixie and stuff like that as a possibility of having a high priority of, of getting to test. Um, because they are coming in contact. The only question I do have, which we can leave to our staff members to come back with a plan is how often do you do it? Because you do it one time doesn't mean they're not going to get it three days later. So we would have to put some type of plan to see if, even if that could work. Second, I think the mobile testing has started. It's working. It should be for people who are 65 or older, should be, you know, have a compromised immune system that have symptoms that need to get tested. And we should be able to do that. And then last, and I think this is the one that I think we really need to discuss. Uh, if we are going to do a drive-through testing, are we are we going to go what what Ed is talking about, trying to test as many people as we possibly can to find the asymptomatic people? Because I can tell you, Ed, personally, I don't have symptoms, and I'm not going. There. I'm not going to show up and go get a test if I don't have to leave my house to do it because I don't have the symptoms. And if I have it, it makes no difference if I'm staying in my home for for the next 14 days, 21 days, that's me. But maybe other people are being irresponsible, you know? But, um, you know, I'm not I'm not gonna take the test, but I still believe that if we are gonna do a drive-through, we should be testing the people who have the symptoms. And, uh, and if they are a positive test, we should be finding out, or they should be finding out who they've been close to in the last so many, so much time as the CDC talks about. And those people can also, be offered to take tests because some of them could be asymptomatic so you can try to find the chain uh and that way we're not um so so you know the way i want to see it if, if we're if if there's a consensus somewhere in here that we can talk about you know i think that the direction the staff is to put together that plan by a certain amount of time and let us know what it what it costs and 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 whether it's feasible <clears throat> whether we can get the get the tests actually you know actually get the test how many numbers we can get and put it all together so we can see what the plan is so um and, and we can move forward from there thank you uh, uh village attorney do you want to speak to anything sure um i just wanted to say as it relates to testing um the business employees um i want to just get a little bit of clarity because i it's a big difference between testing people that give their consent to be tested and then mandatory testing on people. Um, is it my understanding that that you're talking about just those that have agreed or consented to be tested? Is that correct? Yes, I believe. Yes, that's right. Yeah, okay. Right. I just I just wanted to be sure. Uh, Councilmember Petros. One other quick thing that should be mentioned is there's a test. Hello? Yeah, Hello? I'm sorry, Councilmember Laredo, you're next. I, I'll, I'll come right back. Thank to you. you. Thank you. Go ahead, Councilmember Petros. Okay, there is a testing for potentially looking for the antibodies in people's system also that's being rolled out, which means that if you've been exposed and you've successfully gotten past the infectious stage, you will have antibodies. And that may be another approach that we could use to try to do a vill village wide analysis okay hang on a second council member laredo yes hi uh, i ap apologize again look uh, first of all i want to thank ed for taking the initiative on this testing um good good groundwork second of all this is a, a crisis or as say we're going to say a moving target but it's moving almost on an hourly basis i I have extraordinary respect and got increased uh, over the last couple of weeks of this crisis of our professional team, the chief of uh, fire and rescue, the chief of police and the manager. There is no time for studies or plans. I need, we need to delegate to them 
the authority to move on things that may require our action. There's seven of us, uh, all with different opinions and perspectives, and also responding to a lot of people who are trying to give good suggestions. But on this kind of crisis, I think I'd rather put the, 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 the deal in the hands of the professionals and give them the latitude of authority to act. We don't have time to set up meetings and plans. There's things you, you can get a sense what this council wants, but we shouldn't be so into the micromanaging because uh, things literally are changing by the hour. I mean, CDC guidelines uh, and others. So this is a delicate time, and I think we need to give the broadest possible authority for them to act uh, as they have been doing. The only thing I would like to do is to make sure we come out with a very clear single point of, of information so people don't get confused. And one thing that should come out of this, and, and, and I guess to support the manager and the, and the directors, is that we are really moving into strict enforcement. because We have been trying to be quasi-lenient and generous with, for example, the beach, because it has a, some positive aspect. And unfortunately, we got the 40, 50, or 100 clowns that reside in our village that are irresponsible and selfish. And I guess it leaves us no choice but to be very tough on enforcement. Um, other than that, I just think I'm very proud of the work they're doing. Um, and, and I, you know, I continue to ask a stupid question, but all this thing about testing, uh, and there is very few testing kits. A lot of people offering testing mechanisms and, and testing methodologies, but sometimes they don't have the test kit. Uh, and though they ignore that in their sales call. So I think these are the, the very, very real opportunity to delegate uh, within the confines of general policy to do the best they can, literally on a daily basis. Uh, the rest will be just debates and, and, and plans and stuff that we don't, don't have, really don't have time for. Thank you, council member. Um, I guess maybe, and this would be just a suggestion. I, I, I'm not sure about testing all the employees just simply because it, it, I think that pushes beyond, maybe we should start small. I mean, to everybody's point about ramping up, why don't we start with, I mean, the guidelines essentially are 65 plus showing symptoms, right? If people need the testing, why don't we, that would maybe be the way to start this. And then if we can, I, I see you a uh, council member and I see you vice mayor, if we can sort of, ramp up from there but that's a starting point um and why don't why don't we have them come back to us with something like that uh Count, vice mayor uh, what i wanted to say was um i, I think what uh, council member laredo just said was correct you know we can give direction but i would really like to hear from our manager and you know she's going to be the decider on what we're going to do here um, and it really falls on to what she thinks and i think we should hear from you andrea of what you think that we should be doing and, um, and I got you uh, manager. I've got you got one person ahead of you and then I'm going to, I'm going to throw okay. it. To no. Oh, never mind. I, that other person we lost that color. Thanks for a second. There you go. There we go. Thank you. I, I think I didn't have the ability to unmute myself. So I, couldn't yeah, sorry. I was getting feedback when other people were talking, there's a lot of feedback coming out of for whatever reason. So I had to mute you. Apologies. Okay, no, no problem. Thank you for the opportunity to, to chime in. Um, so to an answer a few of the questions that came up, um, I think that I agree that we, we need to move quickly and I think we have been moving quickly. Um, we do have um, the ability to process the test through the lab. Um, we do have the ability to get some tests. They are definitely in limited supply, but as quickly as we can get them, we can deploy them. Um, we've been working on setting up a program that would basically expand as the tests become available. Uh, we will do it as cost effectively as we can. We will do it as expeditiously as we can. Uh, with regard to there being a single point of contact, we have established a hotline where anybody who's interested in getting the test or has questions can call. It's 305-365-8910. So that's the hotline that, that people can call. And um, if there are any other questions I can also answer those I, I I think I wanted to hear what what have we done and and what are we monitoring as far as testing right now did you or the chief want to talk to that 
So what we have done is we have uh, deployed our mobile testing unit through the city of Miami with the medical guidance of their medical director. Uh, we had 10 tests is the first batch that we did. Um, we did the test, we sent them off to the lab. Um, as soon as we get the results, we have a trained, um, we have trained personnel within the fire department who's going to call um, the folks who got tested and we'll share that information with them and provide any counseling or guidance as to what next steps to take for those individuals. Um, moving forward, we have started working with the staffing company that provides the, the nursing and, and the assistance to be able to administer that program. We have looked at a few different sketches and layouts. Um, I spoke actually um, today, we spoke with the folks from the staffing agency and we have a propo an initial proposal from them. Uh, we had a few questions to try to tailor our, our need and I think to make this move more quickly, we wanted to just start with opening up one lane and just get it, just keep going. Right now we don't have the capacity to man for, there's not enough tests to do four lanes so it doesn't really make sense to set up the four lanes until that uh, throughput in the supply chain with the testing comes, but we will be prepared to ramp up with the availability of the tests, whether it's the existing tests we're using or the new technologies um, and the new tests that are coming out so long as our medical director can sign off on the quality of the test. Hi, uh, this is Luis. Can I speak? No. Sure. Councilmember Laredo. Um, you your suggestion, Mayor, I, I second it or make it a motion to end well, this, that we start testing uh, by the guidelines you gave, 65 and over and with symptoms, and uh, delegate to the ramping up almost uh, on a daily basis as, uh, as, as, A, as we have more tests, kids. Uh, but that should be the start of the decision today, which I think is what we're doing, but let's just make it official. I think that's what you're suggesting. I, I could be wrong. Well, that, that, that was my recommendation. Hold on. Let's hear from uh, Council Member McCormick. I make, I make an emotion. I make an emotion. Okay. I will, I'll, sec, I'll, I'll second it for discussion. Hang on. Uh, Council Member McCormick. Council uh, I just would like to add, I think, Mike, this, this motion that's on the table right now is what we are currently doing. Is that right? Yeah, that uh, uh, manager, if you could speak to that or, or yeah. yeah, so we're doing the mobile testing and we are prepared to ramp up as the tests become available and we are pursuing the source and the, and many different sources. Sorry, the criteria you're using now is the same criteria in the motion on the on the table now, right? We're going by CDC guidance, which is 65 and over. One of the actually some of the city of my city uh, Miami Dade County sites today announced that they were reducing the age to 18. So it looks like some of those restrictions are opening up. Uh, but right now we're focusing on the most vulnerable, yes. Okay, could I make a motion, a friendly amendment, if you would take this, uh, Council Member Laredo, to this motion asking that as soon as the manpower or, or supplies are available, that we expand from what we are doing now to include our sort of ascent on a voluntary basis, our essential employees that are encountering our residents all the time, like our Winn Dixie and CVS and for other pharmacies and so forth. Yes, I, I accept that. I, I kept saying about the kids because that's the number one confusion with the people. People think that we have kids and we're not doing it. And it's, we got to play in English here. As we get more kit, uh, I, 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 I agree with your motion. Okay, so just, just to, to add as to you get more kit, guys, guys, relax. Councilmember Laredo agrees with the motion. Yeah, I accept it. I okay. accept the, uh, the okay. I'm going to let Councilmember, oh, first, the, the attorney needed to say something. I, I don't want to do anything illegal. Yeah, I just wanted to say that if prior to us taking um, official action, on we a motion open for public comment we would need to open it for public comment and also uh make a roll call vote on that motion right. when, when it's taken i got okay. it I'm, I'm on it uh, for for clarification is Sorry. the motion on, on the floor right now um test by council member laredo seconded by by mayor davy testing 65 and older with a friendly amendment by council member mccormick which hasn't been seconded to I'll expand second it. to a voluntary basis i will i will second the uh or actually i thought council member i thought council member laredo seconded but if he didn't i'll, I'll second that 
Oh, I'm sorry. Um, okay, I'll. Councilor Can we just clarify that to expand on a voluntary basis to other essential? I don't know what the wording would be if anyone it, employees of essential businesses. I think we've and then just because to the point that this is changing hourly as our availability of test kits increases as our availability of testing the actual implementation progresses I would like to see this moving as quickly as possible but I don't want it to sound like we're suddenly opening up to it with no criteria whatsoever okay we know Council oh sorry I thought you were done sorry go ahead I'm Back. done okay Councilmember London you're up I know I think what I think uh Brett's uh, been waving his hand before me I'll wait for him. I will put you on mute. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Council Member London. Wake. Um, I would also like to make a friendly amendment, not just to limit it to 65 and older, but also anybody has an, a compromised immune system that they are also included in that. Anybody who's going, is going through chemo or any other type of uh, uh, stuff that uh, can, can jeopardize that, I think they should be included in that. I, I would second that. Uh, Council Member, okay, Council Member London, then Council Member Petros. I'd like to amend it uh, to incorporate uh, Katie's suggestion that we also look into providing a test for the antibodies for people who possibly had this who are now immune uh, to this uh, virus as an additional test. Council Member Petros. I'd like us to think a little bit about. Um, I fully understand the idea of testing our employees that are in the Windex in the CVS, but that does go outside the CDC guidelines. Right. And I'm not sure of the ramifications of that. And I don't, I don't want to make that decision on the fly tonight. We have a meeting on Tuesday night, and I think that would give all of us a little bit of chance to, to analyze that and bring it up on Tuesday night to make sure that there's nothing that we're missing. And I say this because when I started thinking about testing at the beginning, it made perfect sense to test everybody. And then as you get deeper into it, you're wondering about how people are going to handle the fact if they're tested positive, what's the community going to do in those circumstances? Are we actually going to have an impact and be able to reduce the amount of viruses out here? If people could just go get reinfected, is this test, do we have, can we do it in a safe way? What's the cost? Just like, um, Ignacio was saying. So those are all things that we need. If we act too quickly, similar to what happened when we made the stance of blocking the island to non-residents and we realized all of the ramifications of that, and obviously people were quick to, to change that and work on it in a different way. We, we just can't make really quick decisions. And that one is a little bit cumbersome for me. Okay. They want to, they want to include all symptomatic no. persons. Hold on one second. Councilmember Laredo, did you have a follow-up point? I just wanted to make sure I wasn't. Agreeing. Yeah. <laughs> I agree with Katie too. Uh, we have a meeting in four days and I watched uh, the, to the uh, village clerk. I, there's, uh, I want to make the effort as you draft this motion that I think it's mine and the major is given that we have no kids. You have to say it in plain English so that people understand it. Uh, we're making a choice, a policy choice that is restricted on, on, on the first step by the number of kids we have. So because of that scarcity is why we're doing this policy, but it has to be stated that thing. We have 10 today, hopefully tomorrow, and the chief called me earlier guarantee that he can have or Daryl doing the can for the purpose of communication with our concerned citizens, this motion should be limited to with the aware, given that we have no kits to test, those few that we have will be prioritized for seniors with uh, symptoms. And thereafter, as they become available and with delegation to the manager and the professionals, that they can ramp up all those areas uh, because if not we're going to create more confusion i think with people who already have a lot of confusion from the national media etc um 
and also to Katie's point brings me back to Segurola's point that this is all gray area, but there are some other legal consequences in terms of uh, HIPAA and all kinds of stuff. So we need to go a little step at a time, but the little steps we're taking have been very good. Uh, and the best step that we made was, in fact, to me, the per- mistake we made that Monday on shutting down the island, how quickly and reasonably intelligent we're responding by ramping back to, to a better system. That's what I like to have the manager have the flexibility to react instead of trying to get us all together every two days. I mean, that's just my opinion. We have, at the end of this conversation, we have still confessed. I see you, Ed. And, and, and so that's why we need to do it ourselves because we're going to create the expectation that if we had all kinds of kids. Okay, thank you, Councilmember Laredo. I, I would add, I, I, I agree on the essential per, uh, employees to his point about cases, uh, uh, the number of kits and all that, but I, I think Mr. Moss brings up an excellent point. We do have, look, this disease does seem to hit the elderly, uh, which apparently is everybody over 65 more, but the fact is we uh, there, there are people, and, and the, but the fact is if you look at the numbers, it's not that much more of an impact than it is from 45 to 54 or 35 to 44. The numbers are not that, that staggeringly different. Um, and so I think those with compromised immune systems, I think council member Petros mentioned it and, and, and vice mayors mentioned it. I think those people should be included in the initial groupings as the tests are available. And then we can start discussing, I mean, to your point about in five days, we can, we can have another conversation. That's where I would go with it. Yeah, it, 65 plus immune compromise. London. Eric, uh, did you get the uh, test kits from uh, BioReference from Optico? You still there, Eric? Yes, sir. We got we got our first kit, test kits from the city of Miami. I can't unvideo myself or whatever. Okay, sorry. Where did they get them from? We uh, they got them from BioReference. Okay, and thank you. Yep. BioReference is the the okay, friend of the Taylor. Easton and myself owns that company, and that's how we got involved with them initially, as far as the testing and reporting. So, have you asked them? Have you talked to BioReference? If you if you talked to Natalie about more kits, you're supposed to have a meeting with her tonight. I I think it's six o'clock. She told me. Uh, we were working on the agreement today, and we were trying to finalize that. And until we got that agreement in place, we can't get any additional kits. Um, I was not on uh, that call. I would need to follow up with uh, Captain Feeney regarding that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, if, if we're going to have a vote on this, we do have to open this for public uh, comment. So I'm going to open it up. Um, Pete, I'm going to give you the, uh, if, is, is there anybody who wants to, to speak to this issue? I have no idea. Okay. Pete, you're in charge. You're driving the bus now. All right, that works. Mr. Three minutes for anybody. That's my timer. So Mr. Fra- uh, Mr. Franklin Weimer, do you wish to speak to this? Going once. Going twice. Going twice. Okay, next. All right, I have, I have a few more. <clears throat> Phone number 305-495-4603. Do you wish to speak to this? They need to state their name and address, please. Right. I believe we, that person just kind of hung up. All right, phone number 305 six. Phone number 305-677-6694. Do you wish to speak to this? Going once, on going hold. twice. They're on hold, just... Yeah. Phone number 305-975-7307. Do you wish to speak to this? Going once? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hello. All right, sir, please state your name and your address, and you have three minutes, I believe. 
Charles Collins, 1121 Crandon Boulevard. Um, I used to work as a union rep. You're going to get some pushback on your, please, uh, giving your hip, but that wasn't the point I wanted to. I could not we hear an address. Sir, sir, restate your name and your address, please. Charles Collins, 1121 Crandon. We good to go? Yes, go ahead. It's a tangential question. We have 20, I was tested this morning and I know there's 20 some odd cases on the building and I, on, on the island. And I heard you speak to the Korean model. I'm wondering what are we doing to follow up on those residents that have tested? I would be contacted after the tests come back next week, but I'm not, they weren't real clear that that was the protocol. Uh, the second thing I tried to share was I used to uh, be a union rep for a 10,000 member union. You're going to get back from uh, Win Dixie and uh, CBS about waiving their HIPAA rights and assuring you they don't have. The, um, but let the lawyers work that out. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Pete, next. All right, number. 305-979-9703. Do you wish to speak to this? Going once. Going twice. That's it. Going three times. Number 724-600-6272. Do you wish to speak to this? Going once. Hello? Nope, they, okay. All right. Okay. Um, there are a few more. There are a few more? Yes, sir. Okay, Who, who's it, who's it, who else? All right. Phone number, okay. 305-495-4603. Do you wish to speak to this? Calling once, calling twice, calling three times. I still have two iPhones, iPhone number one or two, either or, speak up, if you wish to speak to this. Going once, going twice, going three times. Yes, I agree with that. And see, wrong. Oh, I don't see the other iPhone, sir. I believe that is all the fun. All right, uh, seeing that that's it, I'm gonna close. Uh, Public comments. Let me just confirm with chat because this is chat. Is that sufficient? That's sufficient. <clears throat> just to be clear, I mean, I know we're in an emergency to situation, so that's why, you know, per our rules, um, we just need the roll call vote on the motion. And, okay. Uh, well, we're fine. Um, the okay, the, hang on right, one the, second. The motion Can, is complicated right now. I mean, because I have. Well, yeah, um, Conchita, let me, motion, let me, and I have two amendments. Right. So. I think we have to vote on each amendment. Right. The first amendment was made by council member McCormick and seconded by uh, Mayor Davey. And it was, hold on just a second. It was to expand to a voluntary basis to other employees of essential businesses like uh, CBS, the Winn-Dixie, Golden Hog, et cetera. So do I have Roll call on this one, um, Chad. Yeah, roll call everything. Okay, so on this amendment, uh, Council Member London. Yes. Council Member McCorm McCormick. Yes. Vice Mayor Moss. Yes. Council Member Petros. No. Council Member Segurola. I have a question first. Um, have we discussed how this is going to be paid for? No, sir. Okay, then no. Mayor Davey. Uh, no on this amendment for essential personnel at this time. Council Member Laredo. No. Okay, this amendment failed. The next amendment was made by Council Member Moss and seconded by Mayor Davey, and it was to include sym symptomatic persons or persons with symptoms. Right? Uh, am I correct, Vice Mayor Moss? Yeah, can I make a clarification in it? 
Okay. Um, my understanding is that uh, immune compromise may not include med medical conditions that are serious, like heart, pulmonary conditions, and diabetes. I think that should also be included in that. Symptomatic and compromised. Okay. Okay, on, on this motion to include uh, symptomatic persons and, and persons that have compromised um, issues. Councilmember McCormick. I, I don't think that's, I don't think that's it. Yes. Let me clear, let me clarify it once more. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so the, the amendment is to include uh, people with immune, that, who are immune compromised and have medical conditions such as heart, pulmonary, and diabetes conditions. You also mean under 65, right? Everybody, yeah. That, yeah, yeah, it can be any age for those. Everybody's, those everybody's unmuted. Just so everybody, um, everybody is unmuted right now. So, okay. I see you waiting. And, yeah. And, Go ahead. And, and, and that, that motion. This is Vice Mayor, the medical board. conditions were heart, heart, what else? pulmonary conditions, and yeah. diabetes. And the, these people are asymptomatic. No, they, they, no, they have symptoms. No symptoms. Can okay. I just it, ask what we're trying to achieve in doing this? I'm, I just got a little confused because yeah. I feel like what we're doing is talking about providing testing to residents who are symptomatic, and it's my understanding that if you are sick enough, it's possible to get tested, but we're now just bringing it closer to home. But if our goal was to try to do something to help control the spread of this, we're, we're not. If we're not testing the employees of essential businesses that are interacting and that are healthy, then we're, we're just making it more convenient to people who are here and symptomatic. Is that right? That's the starting point, yes. Can, this is Allison, let me, right? can I say something mm -hmm. here? I think, Petros. I think we don't have the capacity right now to go past that, and that's our bottom line. The reason that we're taking a motion, as I understand it right now, is what's happening right now is just people that are over 65 with symptoms, and we would like to, if the bandwidth of available tests and the testing protocol of our mobile unit can do people in this other category are residents that have immuno issues or other things that make them more susceptible. We would like them to be included with the current mobile unit. And then if we can expand anything, we can talk about that on Tuesday. Uh, okay, I but the, vote, the, mode, the amendment that was voted down was as we, as tests are available, it wasn't a go and do it now with tests you don't have. And I just want to be clear that in doing this, we are doing nothing about trying to control the spread. That's correct. I, You're testing people who are already symptomatic. I understand that they need testing and they need answers, but they are already, they're already symptomatic. Their period of time where they went around and spread it without knowing they had the disease has passed. And the population that is coming and working and stocking our shelves and depositing their germs all over, or leaving them alone. That's not a priority over these other people. I, I don't, did you hear the caller say that we might have some problems with union no, issues? No, but we won't uh. if it's a voluntary thing. We also it, have it was if we were compelling them. No uh, one is going to tell Win Dixie they have to do this. Okay, but the, it is that motion, absolutely the motion's been voted down. We're on the second motion. Okay, yeah. with all the respect, that motion failed. So we are uh, now. Let me see if I have it now, Mayor Moss. Wait, I, I have a question about Brett's uh, Brett's amendment. Brett, uh, how are people going to show that they fall into these categories? That would be something that I think staff is going to have to figure out. I, I don't know. Okay. I believe we could expand the survey that's currently been going around the island to include a question that would include that population. Yeah, we're looking for the vulnerable people. Right. So the motion is to include, when possible, residents with immune compromise and medical conditions, 
heart, pulmonary, and diabetes. Okay, on this motion, uh, Council Member McCormick. Yes. Vice Mayor Moss. Yes. Council Member Petro. Yes. Council Member Segurola. Yes. Mayor Davy. Yes. Council Member Lauredo. Yes. Council Member London. Yes. Okay, this amendment carries. Now, on the motion originally uh, as amended now, made by Council Member Lauredo, seconded by Mayor Davy, uh, protesting 65 year old, old residents and older. I, I said for the fifth time now, Cosita, that my motion included given the limited amount of tests we currently have available. Right, as tests no, that's, are that's well, understood. I have said that. I have it written down and I didn't mention it. Thank you, Council Member Laurel. Okay, thank you. Uh, Council Member Laurel on this motion as amended. Yes. Council Member London. Yes. Council Member McCormick. <laughs> I'm sorry, Conchita, it broke up when you read this amendment. Can you just restate it, please? Right. It It's the original amendment uh, testing uh, residents 65 years old and, and older as tests are available with the amendment that just passed, which as tests are available to residents. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Vice Mayor Moss. Uh, yes. Council Member Petro. Yes. Council Member Segurola. Yes. Mayor Davy. Yes. Okay, motion carries. Excellent. Conchita, please yes. put the word K I T S. That's what is kids. Yeah, kids. I have it. Okay, as, I as, thought you said procedure. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to hear. Okay, thank you. Kids. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Michael. Yes, sir. And I assume that basically, and I think uh, Allison brought it up, that we're really not concerned about people who might have it or have symptomatic who will be spreading it all around the island. We're going to test people who have symptoms already. So all the people who might have it or have symptomatic who might be spreading all over, we're not going to do anything to find out. I mean, well, we I, as, as things come available, I think that's a point we have to discuss. Going we don't know what we've done to even try and get kids yet. Ed, we've got to start somewhere. I mean, I, I would prefer that we, well, we've got to start somewhere. So this is the starting point. We're going to meet again in five days, so we can we can talk about it again as we have more information. Fine. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, Thank you. I, I wanted to bring up the subject of of construction. Um, I think this is something that that's you know it, I've been I've been on a lot of calls with mayors across the county. Um, there's a lot of varying uh, responses to this from different communities. Some have banned all construction, some are allowing construction, and some are allowing it in single family homes where the home is not occupied. Um, well, that, I'll take that back now. They, they're, allowing it, they're allowing it in the single family homes, but they are not allowing it in the um, renovations in the condominiums. So I wanted to, to have a discussion and get people's ideas, um, uh, what you think, and, and if we should take any action on this. So keep construction people out? On, on, in, in, the, in the condominiums right now, because that's really the one, um, that's the one area that, that we can impact. I'm going to go to Vice uh, Mayor Moss and then uh, Council Member Segarola. So yeah, so construction, um, you know, it always worries me, construction. But I would say that, the, like you said, the most risk that we have right now are construction workers going into any occupied building, especially <clears> for um, multifamily or even single family. If they're inside working and people are sleeping in there, uh, obviously multifamily is more congested. So I would say that that, to me, is the highest priority when you look at the uh, because uh, it makes me worried. I'm not sure what the condominium is. Uh, Dr. You may know. A little bit more what they're doing in your building, Luis. You may know as well. Um, I'm not sure if, uh, well, Mike, you're in a condo as well. I'm not sure if your condos have decided to stop uh, construction inside, but 
for sure. If I was still living in my building and I knew my neighbor was doing construction, I would definitely wouldn't be happy that going up and down the elevators to go get um, uh, food or, or go out for a walk and knowing that construction workers are, are using it too, uh, because these are sometimes can be very um, problematic areas, close working, a lot of people going in and out, coming off the key, coming back on. Uh, so I think that uh, it's something that we should look at too. Council Member Segarola. Um, I believe across the board, every condo building that I know of on Key Biscayne has adopted a policy that they're banning all construction except for any emergency repairs. Um, I don't know of any building that's not doing that. Um, but I do know of one at least. Okay. Um, it, my The county order, uh, there are several county orders, I think, that have addressed um facilities and specifically condo buildings and i believe that would give the village the power to prohibit any construction in the buildings and and that should be the case Count, council member mccormick and then i guess we'll hear from the, uh, the village. Uh, yeah i had a question about that also maybe for chad i think the governor's order that stated that it superseded all local orders said that construction was an essential business. Do we have any authority on this? So I think that, <clears throat> look, it's been quite a whirlwind. Um, the, there's several orders involved. Um, what was interesting is at five o'clock today, the governor held a press conference. I don't know if you guys saw it, but um, his press conference, he actually verbally clarified his order once again. Um, and he was very clear in his order today that what he provided was the floor for what uh, cities could do, and we can't go beneath the floor. So um, regardless of what you read in you know, the paper, the articles, I think you got to give a little time until the articles come out about his press conference at five. But um, that provided clarity, uh, at least on the issue of what we can do. Um, Council Member Sigarolo is correct. The county order does provide uh, construction sites, open construction sites are a essential business. However, section seven of the order also provides that cities can be more restrictive. Um, so uh, at this point in time, you know, I feel comfortable that we can move forward and restrict uh, construction sites if that's the will of the council. Um, and um, I encourage you to watch the governor's press conference today if you want to get more clarity on that. You can start at um, the 13-minute part. Right. Okay. Um, so, Council. Okay, Councilmember McCormick, did that answer your question? Yeah, I had another though. So, I think my question is still for Chad: is if it's possible to to limit construction in the multifamily dwellings? And also, is it possible if we don't restrict it in single family homes where other people aren't in the building, is it possible to restrict um, the workers that they can only come and go to their job site, not stop at 7-Eleven, not have food trucks coming to feed them, things of that nature? So uh, the answer is yes to all of them. Uh, the hardest part, though, will be to enforce the last one. Um, there's been um, a lot of discussion internally with the administration on that point. Uh, but um, the answer is, you know, yes, we can, you know, love. Councilmember Council Segarola, apologies. Okay. Um, I'm prepared to make a motion to restrict all construction except for emergency repairs on Key Biscayne, whether in multifamily dwellings or single family homes. Okay. Councilmember Petros? I have a second. Oh, we need to unmute. Let me unmute everybody. And we have a second for, for the. I second. Laurelo, second. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councilmember Petros. We're looking at non-essential business. I do think we should clarify this. Uh, as far as the construction, I think it's a cleaner message that if we limit it to in condos and houses. And the other thing, 
that we have to remember is that we should also have care and concern about the construction workers and keeping that we need a consistent message. If we're saying that you can come work in our properties, but you can't come in our grocery stores because you might infect our residents, we also don't want them to get infected. So I, I think we should be consistent. I agree with the motion on the table. Uh, I would also like to ask about car washing and how if what we feel about car washing, landscaping, and also people that are coming in and out of the island as caretakers. Okay. Um, anybody want to comment on that? We have a motion on the floor regarding uh, construction. Yes. Uh, does anybody want to speak to that? Uh, Vice Vice Mayor Moss, and then Council Member uh, London. I'm gonna I'm gonna let Ed go first on this one. Okay. Council, Council Member London, and then then uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor. I understand the uh, condominiums. I understand up and down elevators, all that stuff makes a lot of sense. As far as the single family homes and other buildings, I disagree on that at this point in time. As far as the lunch trucks go, the uh, roach coaches, I really think that basically the roach coaches should be there to serve them so that they don't go to the Winn-Dixie and wherever else. And that's that would take care of them going into the stores uh, without <clears throat> making draconian things not. Remember one more thing. A lot of these people, they're not covered by any kind of programs. A lot of them are illegals. And so as a result, they'll starve too. So I don't know if we accomplish anything except create a big hardship for these people. And we benefit nothing by it. Although I do agree we benefit for the uh, multifamilies with the elevators and back and forth and hallways, et cetera. So I'm obviously against them. The motion, the way it's stated, I'd like to amend it to just have it <clears throat> for the condominiums or I should say the multifamily. All right, let, let me bring in- Can uh, I second uh, that? Got, um, you want to second that emotion? I mean, that-, that Yes, I, I do. Amendment. Sorry, that was- Well, I think, I think you, have, you have a motion on the table. Um, right. The question is, um, is Councilor Sigalolo no? going to accept the amendment? Okay, hold uh, on. Do I speak? Yes, you're on. Okay. Uh, no, I, I, I don't accept that uh, for the reasons uh, Council Member Petro stated. I think we need one message across the board for the whole island to make it easier. But that notwithstanding, you still have the issue of people traveling in and out of the island. They come into contact with other people. Those people come into contact. So it, it, it doesn't really serve. It, it violates the whole point of the stay at home and of the self-quarantining to allow it in one place and not the other, especially when you can't limit in any practical or legal way, the movements of these people within the island once they get there. Um, I, and even though it's another topic to answer Katie's uh, concerns, I, I do think that I would like to handle it separate from this motion, but there is merit to the discussion about landscapers and, and all those other topics that we have to deal with. Let's let's take that up after we get through this, uh, Vice Mayor, and then uh, then I've got a, a question. So he turned down my amendment. So what happens now? No, no, not yet. Well, he turned no. down the amendment. So his is the only one on the floor. Council Member uh, Council Member Moss, you have a comment. You're yeah. So I, I agree with what Ed was saying. Um, you know, and and what what Katie brought up too, because we have landscapers, we got pool guys, we got all these types of people that are coming out here. I see the guy grooming dogs, all this stuff. A lot of these people eat on the food trucks. The food trucks come, I see my landscaper is going to get food. If you start taking out one and not the other, what's going to happen if the food trucks disappear, then people are going to start going into Winn-Dixie. They're going to have to. I mean, there's no other choice. They're going to start going in. Can you guys still hear me? Yeah, yeah we can hear you. Okay, I had something pop up on my screen. So there would be, you know, I'm more worried right now about the multifamily. It, it really does. I think that poses the biggest threat. The construction that's happening in in non-occupied structures, which I believe there's only a few. I think there might be 12 of them uh, on the island. I'm not 100% sure if that's correct. Uh, the biggest one, I think, is maybe the Yacht Club right now. And then I think there's a, a, a dozen or so houses. Um, you know, they, they come into those sites. They work. They get the food at the food truck. They get back in their truck. They go home. You know, I don't know what the control is of how much they're actually going into get a coffee, a Win dixie or something, that could definitely be happening. Um, and, and to Ignacio's point, that would eliminate that. But then we would I would be more worried now about all the other people that are coming onto the key 
who who actually go after the food trucks and not into the Winn-Dixies to eat their lunches. And okay, uh, Chad, if you could just speak to, I know there's there's something under the, the Florida law, uh, federal law, <coughs> we cannot restrict um, construction where they're adding adding housing. Can you can you get into that a little bit? Because that that would be my one of my concerns about the single family. Can you speak to that? I'm trying to unmute you. You have to unmute. Are you unmuted, Chad? You're not unmuted. You got to unmute yourself. Thank you. Um, I think uh, what you're referring to is in the governor's order. It provides that. Uh, Part of the essential services are those that are found in the the defense secretary of defense's guidelines. Um, so I, you know, I think that prior to me seeing that uh, conference at 5 p.m. today, I I, I would have um, agreed with you as to that point. Um, but the five o'clock press conference by the governor today, um, he really came out strong and said that, you know, he's this this order was just to provide the floor and you know it, that he allows local governments to be more restrictive if if their particular needs of their community require it so um you know it's a little bit again um you know i know you guys have seen the orders coming through um you know every night there's an order every morning there's another order clarifying so um it's possible that another order may come out uh tomorrow after the press conference today but um, Listen. Given the press conference at hold on, hold on, council member, please wait for the, the attorney. All right. Um, um, give, given the press conference at five today, I feel comfortable um, going with the, the motion as proposed. Council member Laredo, you had a comment and then council member McCormick. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought I was muted. No, I'd like to move the motion as presented by Sagorola. I think I second it. I think you Just already seconded the question. All right. Well, council member McCormick, <clears throat> and then we'll call the question. Council member McCormick. Uh, I really would like to discuss quickly on this same topic, this idea of stopping 12 single family homes that are unoccupied with people working there in one commercial building. I'm trying to look again at what we are, our goals are and what we're actually accomplishing. I think our bigger risks are things like domestic help and nannies and all the other things that Councilmember Petros mentioned. So I think this is a really, really small segment, and I think it's important to try to measure the risk and also try to figure out what happens with these structures that are open to the elements or what's happening on these different job sites and what are the ramifications going to be when we get into hurricane season and also the impact on on our village and on the individuals who own that when this is over. Councilmember Petros, you have to, okay, there you go. Manager, Andrea, can you tell us how many properties, is it 12? Yeah, so um, Jake can chime in and give some more detail, but what I'm getting is that uh, we have 22 active sites but I think that's regarding the enforcement of um, social distancing and gathering. Jake, can you unmute yourself and give us the update as of today, please? Jake, I'm trying to unmute you. Are you un unmuting? Okay, now I did. Um, right. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, the number of active sites change on a daily basis. Last week, we got down to uh, probably about 10 because there was a um, uh, understanding in the construction industry, there may be an order coming up to uh, close them, so they were getting ready. And this week, numbers spiked up. Um, yesterday, we had 28, and today we have 22 sites. Um, and tomorrow, we may be more. So that's today, we had 22 active sites, with two of them having more than 10 people. Yacht Club has about 30 um, workers working there, and St. Christopher's Church has about 14, and there are a number of single family homes that we monitored have about eight or nine. Again, these numbers are based on what the court, court officer can count from outside. Um, 
uh, he has to be very cautious and not to expose himself to go inside the properties. So the number may be very well over 10. Um, and and um, so what we're doing is we are distributing CDC guidelines and social distancing and to inform that, that uh, you know, they should be really not having more than 10 people at the same site and keep six foot away. And also we understand that uh, the nature of the work on construction, people can't keep six foot distance themselves, especially on single family homes. Um, again, numbers vary. Um, today is 22, tomorrow it may be 30. And, and the contractors talk to each other. The more they know that there is no order, they're free to go, then the more may come online. Okay, uh, let me ask you, have, have you made any um state uh, have there's been any direction for them to go to and from the sites alone and not stop in any of our stores restaurants or anything yes the court officer tells them this is what we want and um they do say that um they will follow that however as far as my department and the court officer we don't we can't really monitor if they do um follow our uh, direction Councilmember McCormick. Council muted. McCormick, you're still muted. I just want to make sure that I understood what Jake was saying. So we're at 20 something total and you're thinking it's less than 10 single family and then the two big commercial sites. And you felt confident that the single family and the commercial sites can effectively handle the social distancing on the job site is that right no the opposite wait hold on let, let, let jake stay jake can you respond to that question yes uh no so total 22 sites active sites two of them commercial one is yacht club the other one is saint christmas church so the 20 are residential um and and also uh there was about five out of the 20 that had, we counted nine people working in there. Um, Council member, you, you. Yeah, just sorry, residential meaning single family resident or residential? Single total. family residential, single family. Okay, vice, vice mayor. Yeah, thank you. Um, and does this thing, are you including all possible construction sites or just the ones that you can see? I'm sure you guys have a record of how many construction sites we actually have on a worst case scenario. That's why I was a little surprised that you're saying it could go up to 30 and it could go down. Um, and the other question I have is, are we allowing new construction to begin or have we frozen all new construction to start? We're not processing any, any permit work for new construction. So that stopped. Um, there are active sites. We have about, um, about 64 active uh, projects in the village. Now, when I say active, this is, they were active in the past three months and they have permits. So some of them are closed because the contractor ran out of money and some of them for whatever reason, the owner didn't proceed. So it doesn't mean that they may not come back and start work next week. They have their permits active and they're legal. And if they want to come back next week and do some work, they can do it. But what we, every single day court officer, we, we go on every single street and we count active construction. And yesterday we had 28, today we have 22. Um, but again, tomorrow maybe more, depends on, on, on where they are with their construction schedule, if they're waiting on some uh, parts or materials. And uh, so that's why I said, you know, number may be uh, closer to 30 tomorrow. But Jake, when you said 60, you're saying these are 60, uh, active permits that somebody can be doing construction in the whole village, including multifamily or no? No, this this is only on, on single family site. So there's 60 active permits to do any type of construction, whether it's changing an AC unit only, or is this major construction? These are major remodeling and new construction. So 60 and then single family homes, major construction, have active permits and only 22 are actually working. And the Correct. other 40 are just, I don't know what they're doing. Yes. Okay. Um, we're going to have to open up uh, uh, public comments before Mike. we uh, go forward with a vote. Uh, uh, sorry, Ed, uh, Council Member London. Yep. 
Jake, uh, are a number of these uh, I'm driving driving around? I see a number of new houses or new projects where you only have basically pilings put in the ground. You don't have grade beams put in. Are you encountering these with the uh, the active construction sites? Yes, sir. Uh, I would suggest possibly since we're not processing any new permits that anybody who is just putting the pilings at this point in time, there's no reason for them to keep moving forward because they will suffer no damage, no weather related things or whatsoever with the pilings in the ground. <laughs> pilings will be good six months from now or however long it takes. So I would not mind saying that anybody who just has pilings in the ground ceases construction at this point in time. But the other single family homes and the commercial single family homes that are uh, and the commercial can continue. Um, okay, I'm, I'm Jake. Yes, sir. No, the, okay. Um, let me open this to public comments. Pete, can you take that? Yes, sir. All right. Miss, Mr. Franklin Weimer, do you have anything to say? All I want? No, no, I Thank don't. You, Thank sir. you. Telephone number 305-495-4603. Do you have anything to say? Going once? Going twice? No. Thank you, sir. Telephone number 305-677-6694. Do you have anything to say? Going once? Going no, twice? I don't. Thank you, sir. Telephone number 305-975-7307. Do you have anything to say? Yeah, one comment. Can we get at the last four numbers? I don't want my personal phone number in the public record. The second issue is I am doing- Can you state your name and address for the record, please? Same as last time. Charles Collins, 1121 Crandon Boulevard. Check with the attorney, but I hope you can alter these this recording. So I'd like not to be entering my personal phone number in the record. So we can identify us by the last four digits or something. Thank you. Anyway, the point I wanted to make is I am doing a single family home in the Gables. Stopping a construction. I only have one or two subs there a day. Um, this is more a form over function. The guys that have open permits are going to wind down and close on their own. We shut down private homes. It, you know, it's a tremendous financial burden on the car or the pony. Um, what was the other issue? You said you're closing new permits, so the whole thing will solve itself soon enough. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Pete. Yep. Next person on telephone, the telephone number three zero five nine seven nine nine seven zero three. Do you have anything to say? Going once, going twice. Uh, an iPhone user, um, no phone number given. Do you have anything to say? Going once, going twice, going three times. We have, oh, someone just disappeared. All right, phone number. Nine one seven eight six eight zero six three eight. Going once, going twice, going three times. Hello, hello, yes, hello, yes. Please state your Can name. Can you hear me? Press for the record. Yes, Cecilia Absher six five zero North Mashta Drive. I just wanted to mention that um, just in looking at the uh, public reporting today about the order that the governor signed, I'm not so sure that it actually did set up a floor. So I do think we just need to go back and look at it. Um, there's actually an article in the Orlando Sentinel that says that it's not a floor. It says that it supersedes all the other local orders. And so I did pull up the order that he signed, the 20-92, unless he signed something subsequent to that, which says that 
this order shall supersede any conflicting official action or order issued by local officials in response to COVID-19. So it, it, it seems it, it may not do what it was reported to do. And I'm just mentioning that so that we make sure we're informed and we vote on what's a, appropriate and allowed based upon the executive order. Thank you. Thank you. Are there, are there any other public comments? There is one more number that just came in. Okay. The last four digits, one second. The last four, uh, the phone number, the last four digits of 3797. Do you have anything to say? Hello? Hello? Hello, Charles Duncan, 200, Gallon Drive. 102. Go ahead, Charles. <clears throat> uh, just a uh, great job, y'all. I'm a plumbing contractor, so I'm driving around the streets pretty much every day. But um, some of the job sites I've counted up to 30, 34 cars just along the Pacific Road. I think that's just too many cars on one job site, being that it is a double construction site over there at 360, 390. But I see it on Cubus Cane everywhere uh, in the last week. My myself, I only uh, basically go out for emergency drives, uh, jobs, I'm sorry, to uh, perform only for floods and leaks and stuff like that for uh, any homeowners. But I do see a lot of a lot of job sites full of people. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? That seems to conclude public comments. Okay, I'm gonna close public comments. Um, so, um, uh, clerk, uh, Phyllis Clerk, if you could please read back what the motion is. Okay, so the um, the amending motion was not accepted by council member Segurola. So the motion on the floor was made by council member Segurola and seconded by council member Lauredo and was to restrict construction on single family and multi-family residences. With the exception of emergency repairs. Okay. Right. Um. Thank you. Um, on this motion then, council member Petros. Oh, we need to unmute. Uh, <coughs> You need to unmute. Okay, Councilmember just, Petros. Quick question. I I'm concerned about the order and the conflict with the governor's order. I'd like Chad to speak on that before we vote. Um, as I stated before, um, I understand um, what the news articles might have said. Um, I I've read the orders very closely. Um, I would encourage anyone that would like to see uh, how the governor further clarified it to watch his press conference that was at five o'clock today. You can turn it to the 13th minute and he makes it very clear that he's just setting the floor that uh, local governments can be more restrictive. Um, I, I understand there is a lot of confusion uh, and you know sometimes the media doesn't pick it up as quickly, but I, I would encourage anyone that wants to look at it, you can look at it at that point. Um, but the, the governor clarified the point today. Chad, can you state for all of us the, what his floor is before we take this vote? What did he, he say was his floor? The, he said that the floor, he said that <laughs> the, uh, hold on one second, I'm sorry. Chad, you're, yeah, muted. you're muted. You're muted again, Chad. I know you wouldn't, I couldn't get unmuted. You you have to hit the button. Sorry, my family decided to barge in. Um, <laughs> so um, what the governor was saying was that he provided the floor of those essential services that were allowed to be open. And if local governments wanted to do, um, be more restrictive given their particular community needs, they had that right to do that. 
Um, and he said it over and over again. Uh, he even gave an example that um, to the extent that grocery stores, which are deemed an essential service, that if a local government wanted to restrict the occupancy in that, that um, store, that they could do that. Um, he talked about if they wanted to make social distancing more restrictive, they could do that. So uh, his press conference really changed um, the, the really the way the written order reads. So I anticipate there will be um, a either another clarification um, or another order coming. Okay, thank you. Can can I take a vote now? Is it clarified? Yes, please. Yes. Okay. Um, Council Member Petros. Yes. Council Member Segurola? Yes. Mayor Davey? Uh, no. Council Member Laureda? Yes. Council Member London? You're muted. Council no. Member London? Try it again, Ed. Uh, you're muted. You're no. Uh, no. Thank you. Council Member McCormick? Uh, you are muted, Council Member McCormick? No. no. Uh, Vice Mayor Moss? No. Okay, the motion fails. Can we make another motion? I would like to make a motion for construction. Okay. Uh, I think the motion should be, and I, I want to ask, if it's repeated, <laughs> but I think the motion should be that we ban all, constru all construction in multifamily and occupied buildings other than emergency uh, repairs and maintenance and for the new construction that's outside I think that we should require all sites to be wearing face masks everybody on the site has to have a face mask and gloves on there and we will have code enforcement out there and if they don't comply they will get shut down and I would like to ask if we can also add a limit of how many workers can be on a site if we can keep it under 10 at, at all times or maybe even less if we if we if we would like to. I just don't know what that I part of the motion is. I would what second that. Number is. I'll second that motion. How, how is this going to be enforced? Yeah, code enforcement. Uh, Hold on, Council Member Sigarella just asked a question. Council Member Loretta, did you have a question? Where's Council? No, Member? I I just wonder what the motion is because it was so long that it seems like we're all it's, it's a motion to also manage uh which is not our purview i mean either you stop and put a period after the first part of your motion which is about multi-family since the other motion died you want to basically continue to have construction on the home side and i'll be happy to support it but you went on and on after that period and i i don't agree with any of it uh, no, a number of uh, uh how do construction people work with gloves uh, who patrols it? I mean, we keep putting things out. We don't have 3,000 police officers and 4,000 inspectors. We have to really have a sense of limit for what we can do. So I, I just wonder what the motion is. If it stops that your first statement, then I'd be happy to go for it. The rest, I think, is superb. It, it's not relevant to our, our role as policymakers. And then I would have to vote no. Uh, Councilman uh, Petros? No. Can I make a, rec a recommendation to amend your motion to say construction in housing sites and literally just limit 10 or less and they need to maintain the six, well, 10 or less period. And that would be the one ex exception, which should be easy to enforce as you can tell by the number of ca cars. So you still will be limiting the multifamily, banning the multifamily yes, altogether? Yes. Yes. I mean, I, I disagree with the personal protective equipment. Um, I mean, construction sites are supposed to be wearing them anyways, but we know that a lot of people don't. But you go and talk to these guys, they want to work, they want to keep working. If you tell them that, look, we can shut you down if you don't comply, they will make sure that they're all wearing it. They really will. And I think it's in the best interest for all of us to make sure that that is being complied with. If you want to make it as a recommendation, I don't care, but I think it, I think we should put it in the motion. I have a question for Jake. Jake, are you here? Yes, sir. Um, can code enforcement enforce this? How many 
You got Enforcement some... officers, do you have Hold them on, on the street? Ed, 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 wait. One. No. And are they present in the village every day? Uh, yes, he is. He's full time. Full time. Well, one, okay. one inspector, you said? Hold on. Councilmember Laredo, oh, Councilmember oh, Segarola oh, is asking the questions, and then Councilmember London's up. But I couldn't hear the answer. Yeah, one, one was the answer. Thank you. Okay. Councilmember London? You have two building inspectors, one electrical inspector, mechanical inspector, and eight, uh, I guess the AC inspector, and you got Bill Fair. All those people now basically uh, can, can act, be out in the site. They're supposed to go inspect jobs on a regular basis. So you have seven or eight people out there, Ignacio. Okay. Jake, is that accurate? Correct. They don't function as a court officer in the force of the code. Um, they are building inspectors. If need be, they could be utilized. However, given the number of construction sites that are active and they be our hands on and we know where they are, what officer is sufficient in terms of uh, enforcing any order that uh, the council may enforce? I mean, uh, propose. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, so. Councilmember Petros, just to be clear on your proposed amendment, I'm, I'm sorry, Councilmember McCormick, un unmute. Thank you. I think I was the only one who couldn't unmute myself. I was dying here. Um, Brett, if I could make a suggestion to you, perhaps you want to separate your motion into two and deal uh -huh. with multifamily units as one, and then you can put your restrictions on, on single family dwellings as a separate motion. I'm fine with can that. I, can I read what I have to see if maybe it makes sense? The motion? What I have is uh, ban all construction on multifamily except for emergency purposes and restrict single family construction to 10 or less workers and they should wear protective gear. Is that correct, Vice Mayor Moss? Yeah, I'll second it. Oh, it was it was already I it was um, made by uh, Vice Mayor Moss and seconded by um, Mayor Davy. Right, and, and the, the attorney wants to weigh in. I just want to make a suggestion instead of saying the ten or less. Do you want to just say pursuant to the CDC guidelines? Because if they change, you may want to follow how they how they change. They may go more restrictive than what you're saying now. I'm um, just making that suggestion. Do you accept that, uh, Vice Mayor Moss? Yeah, I'll accept that. Okay. So it, it we're going to be... need, need any public comments again on this one. Okay. Pete? All right. Mr. Wish they were... Mr. Franklin Weimer, do you wish to speak to this? No, thank you. Thank you, sir. Caller, with the last four digits of their number being 4603, do you wish to speak to this? Going once? No. Thank you, sir. Nope. Caller, with the last four digits of their number being 6694, do you wish, do you wish to speak to this? Going once? Uh, no, I do not. Thank you, sir. Caller with the last four digits of their number being 7307. Do you wish to speak to this? Going once. Next. Caller with the last four digits of their number being 0638. Do you wish to speak to this? Going I once. I have no further additional comments. Thank you, ma'am. Caller with the last four digits of their phone number being 6530. Do you wish to speak to this? <coughs> Go ahead, once. Uh, yes. I, um, not, this is Luis Cruz, 640 Island. Can you state your name and address? Luis <laughs> Dela Cruz, 640 Allendale. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but. Luis, yes, it's I okay. No, pro no problem. Uh, um, I, I, I really had a hard time understanding the, the, mo the, the second part of the motion. 
is, uh, I mean, is this only for single family homes that, that we're talking about? Yes. Okay. All right. Then I, I, I don't have anything to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? We have no, far, no okay, further comments. Closing public comments. Um, all right, a roll call vote on the motion as amended. Okay, um, Mayor Davey? Yes. Councilman Laurelli? Only because uh, if I vote no, it would allow condominium, so I vote yes. <laughs> Council Member London? Yes. Yeah. Did you say yes? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Council Member McCormick? Laughing Laredo. Council Member McCormick? Uh, she needs to unmute, unmute her. herself. Unmute, please. She's muting herself, which is so unusual. Wasn't me. I couldn't unmute. It kept saying. Uh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Vice Mayor Moss? Yes. Council Member Petros? Uh, you need to unmute, unmute. You gotta unmute yourself. I think, Mike, when you mute all of us, like no, I don't unmute of... all of you. That's the thing. I'm not unmuting people. No, when you mute all of us and then we try to unmute, we can't. Until but I haven't been unmuting you. I don't know. Because we're you having guys... problems. Don't judge yes, me. Yes, Conchita. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Please don't take it up with the mayor. He's doing a great job. Council Member Segurola? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Okay, well, I'm sorry, was there a second motion on something else? No, that was the last motion. Motion to adjourn. No, hold on, hold on, slow up. Uh, uh, Councilmember <laughs> Petrick brought something up about landscapers and something else, and I wanted to know if, if there's anything else you want to bring up now, or do you want to discuss it? I, I think we should deal with all the issues, dog groomers, landscapers, and uh, housekeepers slash nannies, people that come into the home. I, I think that the housekeeper slash nanny, I have a hard time with just because some of those people, well, I, I understand what you're trying to do. There are some who are actually caretakers, you know, they're people are relying on for, for day to day. You know, our, our older residents, some of them have housekeepers that are acting as caretakers. And so that's a, that's a, a gray area for me. I agree with everything else you're, ta you're talking about. Um, and I would like to hear what everybody has to say that that area uh, council member london yeah as regarding the uh landscapers and the pool people and chuck if you're still there uh chuck and i had a discussion and he told me about the broken window theory i think it was called starting kansas city or somewhere and how the important thing is you don't want a place to get overgrown you want people to still have pride and you also since you can't do anything else and if people have private pools there's no reason they can't use their private pool since number one the and correct me if i'm wrong chuck that people uh the landscapers basically don't go in the house they they don't they bring their own food they don't go to the stores to buy stuff and the same thing for the pool people i think that's what you told me chuck correct me if i'm wrong yeah, that's correct and uh good evening uh mayor council not a manager um there's there's this thing out there that's been around for a long time called a broken window theory and uh, it took place uh, like a crime study in Kansas City. And what it really talks about is if you have a neighborhood uh, that is uh, the beginning, uh, has a beginning of vandalism, and there's a broken window there, and that window is not fixed, and people start to see things like that, then you have a little graffiti, and that graffiti is not cleaned up. And then people start to let lawns get overgrown or parks get overgrown. And as these types of things begin to occur, a depression within that community uh, starts to grow and, and crime starts to grow also. Uh, and so my whole point here is you've got a, a truck full of lawn people that come in. They're one truck. They don't bring these big trucks to our shop centers or anywhere else they go on site they mow the lawns same with our pool people the pool people now that people are restricted and there is a quasi stay-at-home order the people who do have a pool 
it's important that they be able to maintain that and use that. And okay. so in order to keep the village looking beautiful with all of the rough things that we're going through and all of the depression that our citizens are going through, <laughs> we were to eliminate landscapers and start to see our yards and our parks and our drives uh, through the uh, corridors be uh, overgrown and, and, and start to look downtrodden. That's going to create, as it does after a hurricane, a great sense of dis uh, dissatisfaction. It creates a great sense of depression. And so as long as we at least have the beauty of Key Escape, and they're allowed to do that. They really don't wander anywhere else. They eat right there on site. They bring their own food. Uh, I've never seen a pool guy actually sit there and lay on the uh, grass and eat food. They come in, they do a pool, and they leave. There's no real contact with the ownership of the homes. I think that's probably one of the most important things we can maintain uh, so that we keep Keep Us Game beautiful and it gives us all something good uh, to look at it. Uh, Council Member McCormick. Um, thank, thank you, Chief. I would like to add also, I think when you get into pool maintenance, you do sometimes start to look at um, other issues of public health that un unmaintained pools can become breeding grounds for <clears throat> mosquitoes and mosquito-borne illness. Um, but I would also like to say, uh, I'm wondering if Chad can weigh in, if there's some way to word uh, an order to deal with domestic health actually inside of people's homes that can carve out um, an option for people who do genuinely need someone as a caregiver. And also I know that we have community, if we have people in our community that are essential employees people that work in hospitals, for example, who need someone to come and they need it for childcare. And our greater community needs these people to go to work. But with the exception of those types of cases, I think that when we're really looking at mitigating risk of spread of this disease and making that our goal and doing these orders, the people who are coming to the island and coming into people's home, in my opinion, pose a greater risk than somebody coming to maintain your pool, as Chief just said, they're not really interacting with people. They're just going in a yard and doing a pool or going on a condo property and doing a pool. That was great, Claire. That's it. Chad, any thoughts? Uh, okay, sorry, I, I couldn't unmute myself again. Um, we, can, we can definitely look into doing that. Um, we would need to have clear direction on what the parameters were. Um, I, I, I don't know if we could do that tonight on the phone, uh, but if it's something that the council would like us to examine, we can bring something back on Tuesday. Um, good. What are you laughing about, Ed? <laughs> Somebody told me to stop eating on television. <laughs> it wasn't me, but I was thinking it. Um, all right, so yeah, I mean, do we have consensus to come back or Councilmember Petros, what are your thoughts? I think that I understand everybody's comments. If we were to do something, I think we should put a time limit on it. If we were really trying to control the amount and it would be a two week time limit. Um, some things, I th the pool strikes me as the most essential. That's something that people don't necessarily even know how to manage the chemicals and those go bad right. quickly. Yep. Um, landscaping, I personally don't think our island would look bad with a two-week stop of landscaping, but I, I'm amenable and understand that they're outside and there isn't as much of a risk. So I, the dog groomers is another one, and the car washers, I, I personally think we could do without those for two weeks, but if we start slicing things, then it's, right, it's a virus that we're dealing with, so it, we're either kind of all in or all out on some of this Your vice mayor yeah i think it, i you know i agree if, if things get worse this is definitely an option on the table i just don't see this as a major high risk they're outside working um i sometimes i don't even see them they come in and out very quickly 
you know, if, if we're talking about that, to your point, Katie, you know, I, I tell you what, I, I'm more nervous of touching my garbage cans to put them back in the back of my house because I know the garbage men pick those up and they're touching everybody's garbage. And I'm very careful when I touch the garbage can to go back and wash my hands just in case. But I don't think we're in the position of saying, now we can't have our garbage picked up, right? We need to have certain type of services going. Now, I know landscape is not as crucial as garbage, but uh, and trash pickup. But you know, I think that um, right now, I, you know, I don't see it as as a as a major major risk in, in that area. And, and and you know, people need to live too. I'm, I'm I'm I know there's life there's life consequences and on, on both ends. Uh, so so we have to be really careful at the same time. Is there to me, Mike, the most important thing was that we have a discussion about this and we reach consensus because there's a lot of people in the community that don't know and keep wondering what, why we're making decisions on what's allowed and what's not. So I think we should come to a consensus tonight and on, on, on all of those, on all of those services. You know, I, I'm, I'm torn because I was proposing, I mean, early on, I said, let's, let's stop it all. One of the, you know, and then we did that. And the, the county kind of came out with, well, these are all essential services. And I thought, well, that's silly. And then first the chief came out with the, the broken theory, the broken window theory, which I, I do understand. Then I started thinking about, about pools and, and absolutely. I know I managed to turn my pool green incredibly quickly one time. Um, so I, I get that. And then you start, and then we start talking about, I mean, to council member McCormick's point, I am absolutely, I would, I would love us to do something about, the, the babysitters and house cleaners that are coming out, but I also want to make sure that those residents who do need a caretaker or those individuals, you know, are medical professionals and are still having to leave their kids at home, have care at home. So I think that should be carefully crafted. I, 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 I understand where you're trying to go and I'm, I'm right there with you. I don't think we need dog groomers um, and, and car cleaners out here, but, but, I mean, are we just going to pick out those four people or five people? It doesn't seem that that makes much sense on an order, but let, I would like to, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy we're doing this because I like to hear that we're all much on the same page. We just have a little bit of variation on ourselves, but we're all, we're all mindful of it. And I think we should be trying to figure out how we can address it as, as vice mayor said, you know, if things do take a turn for the worse, we should be prepared to, to drop even more stringent uh, restrictions on people coming to the island. That's where I am. I'm sorry. Okay. I, I'm not muting you. I swear, Allison, you're doing this to yourself. Or is Thank it you. I do. I have to mute when I'm not speaking. There's a lot of people and animals in this house. I have so, two other questions. Go ahead, Allison. Are you oh, done or not? Sorry. I, I just had a question. So I really have not left my house in weeks with the exception of one golf cart ride like yesterday. And I think yesterday was the first day I left the house in, in weeks. So are, I know I had seen on social media a call for people to suspend like domestic workers when, where they could. And right. I was happy to see that people were encouraging people to pay them anyway. But it, it, are those of you that maybe have been out or if you live in, in a multifamily building, maybe you can enlighten me, how much of this are we still seeing in the community? Are we still seeing a lot of people having people come to their homes or have people been sort of taking this issue on themselves? If anyone has any comment, I'd love to Give hear. A second. I mean, I can talk to, you know, Ocean Lane Drive, I'm still seeing some. I don't know if I necessarily see as many as I was seeing, but I still see some. So that, that's all I can speak to. I'm sorry, Council Member Petrus, you had a couple more questions. Not on this subject though. <laughs> Um, but you know, if anybody else can weigh in, I don't know. I think we lost, did we lose? We lost two people. We lost, uh, council member Laredo and council, oh, there's council member Segarola. He disappeared into his background, uh, mm -hmm. but I don't know if he saw anything. <laughs> I don't know. And I wouldn't know Allison. I, I haven't seen people, but I'm really not around a bunch of people that have caretakers right. in the home. Got it. My, my, my gut is, my gut is people haven't changed those habits because we haven't asked them to, and it's a big change. Well, I think that, that we have, it's been suggested and I've certainly seen We have it. asked, I'm, I'm sorry. That, let me correct. Asked, I, I've replied. definitely asked. We the people replied. that I talked to have suspended having people come in their homes. Right. So yeah. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. 
And have, do we know, maybe the manager can speak, do we know if any associations have taken upon themselves to say no more? We have heard from a lot of the associations that have taken their own initiative. Um, I do believe there are some buildings that still um, haven't taken that step. Okay. And is your feeling on that, that they're sort of waiting for us to do it, that they're more comfortable with it coming from us? I think that was part of the reason why we tried to put out that guidance for condos, um, that, that they were looking for some, for some support in, in administering that. I, I do think so. If I may uh, second, some buildings have taken the lead and gotten very aggressive on limiting access to the properties. Other buildings have laid back and said, well, gee, the village or the county, the state aren't saying anything, so we can go ahead and, and be more lax in what we do. So it depends building by building. Okay. I think for now, I brought these up, like I said, so we can have the discussion, but let's leave it like it is currently. And if we feel like we have an increase or an uptick in numbers, we know that this is something that we would take action on. Potentially. Well, and I think again, <laughs> at the end of the day, the manager can uh, in a, of herself take action. So you know, I, I think it's good for us to be weighing in, but let's remember the manager has the capability. If this if this situation changes, she can make this ruling. We're just here so to if, if what we she's leave doing. it with the manager monitoring this situation, could we at, at least please give her yeah. our opinions, how we feel about it? I mean, I, I know for me personally, I have stopped having anyone come into my house and feel that that's definitely the way to go when you're talking about trying to stop the spread. And if other people want to sort of give their opinion, Mike, is it funny? You're, you're muted. muted, but you look like you're laughing. You're muted, you're muted himself. Muted. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I was laughing because Claire, Claire in London just popped up. She, she came in. She, uh, went, uh, she left. I can only see three people at a time on my phone, so I feel like Bill was walking phone. behind Katie, so you know, it's just, there's a lot going on here. Okay. So no, I, agree. I, I think we should be pushing people not to. I, I, I again, I, I very, very early, I wanted to say let's limit, 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 but then you start looking at what are our limits, what are the ramifications, and so I, I, I think it's a point to keep, keep thinking about and keep pushing. Right. Yes, uh, Councilmember London. Yeah, I'd like to uh, make a motion that basically pool companies, <coughs> excuse me, and landscape contractors will be permitted to come into the village so that the, uh, that is the will of the council. So the mayor, so the manager would not uh, decide to do something contrary to that, because this is what the chief recommends. And I happen to agree with him completely. Well, do we need a motion? motion. That? What's that? That's the motion. We have to make a motion on that. Actually, his motion is to prohibit the manager from making that choice. On those two things. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, comfortable prohibiting her right. to do anything well, right now me prohibiting i'm saying permitting them i didn't say um, I well, said but the, the, you're, pro the you're, reason you're prohibiting a prohibition mm -hmm. uh, is there a second for that is there a second for it that it dies for lack of a second wonderful <laughs> i try, right. try what's your next question i had two one is about us discussing if we want to try to give people access to masks and whether we should be asking our village manager to try to figure out if we can get a source for masks, if not the end, the, not the medical masks, just regular masks, or should we let people just take care of that themselves? I, th I think that Melissa has sourced a tremendous number of masks. So we don't ask her what she has. I think you can use uh, other, you're talking about just, just typical everyday people going out for, for right. a walk or something, you would right. want them to wear a mask, correct? Yes, in the news in the last two days, there's been a lot of discussion on whether they would start recommending that everybody wear masks when they go outside or not. Um, and yeah. I didn't know if we wanted to be on the front end of that possibility or if we just want to leave it to the individuals. Well, I think people can actually make their own mask. You can use a t-shirt, you can use a bandana, you can use all types of things that you can put over your, your face. And you don't need to buy a uh, medical mask or something like that, unless I think you're dealing directly with uh, COVID-19 patients. 
um, that are sick. So, you know, that's what we're doing. You know, if we don't have masks, we're, we're, we're kind of improvising, Im improvising with a t-shirt or a cloth or whatever and tie it around and, and you go out. And I think, I don't know from a health standpoint if that's sufficient, but you know, that's what I would recommend to everybody instead of trying to take up medical masks or masks that other people may actually need in, in hospitals and stuff like that. I, I wasn't suggesting those masks, just regular masks. Just okay. regular masks. Okay. Um, Okay, um, so that question, do you have anything else on that? Not on that. My last one would be what our mindset is on how to move from crisis mode to sustaining mode, because I think this is going to be going on for a while. And we as a council obviously are going to have a meeting next week, but we need to try and get ourselves in a groove right now and, and the village too to get into a groove to some extent. I'm not clear on what, what do you mean by getting, I mean, I, I think we've got to be looking at long-term projects as well. Um, but I think, you know, I, I think it's a, we will, as we get used to this, I think, I, I don't know if I can offer anything more than that. What do, what do you mean? I guess, what do you mean? What do you mean? I think the point being that we're, we're what, a week and a half into when we made a lot of restrictions or the, the village made restrictions and it's not going to be easing up in the next seven days. We're going to probably be in this mode of isolation through April and maybe even through May. And so as a result, we need to be able to get things accomplished. And uh, an example on the state level is they're starting to do some construction projects um, that they couldn't do if people were out on the roads. I mean, we could potentially be getting some things done right now when people are home. And I, I don't know exactly what they are, but I would, I would like to think in that direction of how to try to be productive too, to some extent in a safe way during this time period. Okay, well, yeah, if there are examples of things you can bring, bring them to the next meeting. House member, Sangarola, are you waiting or are you just council member Sangarola? What are you doing? There, I, I couldn't unmute myself. Okay. Um, <laughs> there, there, there is one more, there is one more topic I wanted to address. I, well, I hold on. Let, let, can, let, let's go yeah. to council member Petros's first. Right. Uh, you know, if people have ideas, I mean, I have things that I'm going to talk about on Tuesday that I want to bring up now about the causeway um, and and some other stuff. Yeah, I, I agree. We should we should continue to work forward. I, I mean, I don't think this is the only thing going on in the village. I know it, it's consumed a lot of resources for the staff, but I think they are also very, you know, we've got a budget coming up. We've got other things that they're working on. Um, we have to, you're right. I, I can shed some light as well on some of the things we are able to continue to move. Please. The, it, so... So one of so in particular with regard to the design and engineering and architectural work, a lot of that work can be done in office and um, is moving. So our um, FDOT grant projects are moving. Um, we can move on the design criteria packages for our stormwater improvement. Um, we can move on a lot of that design work. We're also we can move on some of the planning items. So the comp plan amendment, um, the vision board work can be can move. Um, we've also taken some of the downtime to advance some of the automation that we're working toward and the systems. So finally, the permitting system is now in the testing phase. So a lot of those resources are being dedicated to um, finalizing the permitting system. Um, once things quiet down on the communication side, we'll be able to dedicate some resources back to um, some of those back-end offices, um, back-end systems as well, like the, the website. Obviously, the budget will continue. Um, comp plan amendment will continue. So there are things that we are going to be able to to keep moving. Um, my my concern was with what Katie said about going to sustainability mode. Number one, the budget that we're in budget season, and number two, going forward, staying isolated but continuing to function. We have all the village boards. Are we going to start doing uh, village board meetings through Zoom and have? And have them open to the public. You know, I, I think we, we need to come up with a policy on that also. This is the new normal, at least for the next couple of months. Yeah, that's right. 
I, to be clear, I didn't mean that we had to have a whole discussion on it tonight. Maybe it's something that we can bring back on Tuesday, but just to be thinking in that direction sure. as we end this meeting. Absolutely. Mike, before you adjourn, it does not to be right now, but I do have one totally separate thing I'd just like to say. Okay. Now our, uh, I just want to bring it to everyone's attention because as life does somehow go on in these strange times, um, perhaps, I don't know if the Islander News is out there listening, they could maybe run something on this and uh, maybe even the manager could put out a communication, but the Miami-Dade County Public Schools uh, sent out their acceptances for magnet school programs in the last few days. And although we all seem to be kind of operating a little strangely, it's really important that people reply to that. Uh, the deadline for it is in the next couple, next week, or so, and if, if you don't reply, you automatically give up your spot. So it is important that, although we're all doing things a little differently, this is something that um, I know they will not yield on. So if you have applied to magnet programs, make sure that you check your email or that you go on the website and that you look for um, you know, what your status is and that you would take action on it. and if we could try to get that word out, if you, if anyone's listening and is on social media, if you can share it with your friends and your chats and, you know, specifically, I know we have many, many people in our community <coughs> who have applied to Mast Academy and those seats will be forfeited if you don't, if you do not act on the information you receive. So I just wanted to get that out there. Excellent point. All right, thank you. Anybody else? Okay, um, motion to adjourn. Oh, you beat me to it one time. All right, everybody have a good Second. night. Thank you. Thank you to staff. Thanks for everything you guys Stay safe, everyone, and stay home. Take good care. Night. Good night.